This is the GTN Show and this week we're talking fast 10Ks, new mountains on Zwift and how krill oil can improve your bike leg. Yes, and with the Commonwealth Games just around the corner, we're going to be taking a look at the athletes, the ones to watch, including South African uber swimmer Chad the Cross in the triathlon. Well, that last bit of news may not be true, but it did fool you, didn't it, Heather? I know, I got really excited. I mean, Chad Lacrosse is a, an Olympic gold medalist in swimming, and I just thought, wow, this could mix things up for the Brownies at the front of the pack. He said um, in, in this article that he was going to join um, Henry Schumann and Richard Murray, and, you know, then that you know, it could be a really strong performance. And when I, when I read the last bit of, like, well, it could be, you know, podium one, two, and three, I was like... Hang on a minute. Don't think, it's a thing we would know. And yeah, sadly, I checked the um, entry list and he's not on there. <laughs> and the date, and it's in <laughs> April the 1st. I love yeah, a good April Fool's. <laughs> well, on out. the subject of the Commonwealth Games, I think we should talk some predictions. Yeah, I think we should. And before we get started, a quick bit of background on the Commonwealth Games, because lots of you might not have heard of it. And it is open to the countries that are part of the Commonwealth Nations. But that does include for triathlon some pretty big superpowers, such as um, Bermuda, obviously, and Flora Duffy, um, Canada, Australia. Don't forget England. South Africa, England, Wales and Scotland. You know, we just have even more places. <laughs> so it's a, you know, a massive competition. It happens once every four years. So it's so a game. Sandwich between the Summer Olympic Games. Yeah, and our triathlon was first introduced into the Commonwealth Games in 2002 at the mm -hmm. Manchester Games. Um, and we've had three games since. Uh, one was actually cancelled, unfortunately, in 2010 because of the water quality in Delhi. Um, but our last one in 2014 was in Glasgow in yeah. Scotland. And that include the mixed relay for the first time. And now this one's got the mixed relay, the individuals, and it's also got a para triathlon event as well. Well, traditionally, the Commonwealth Games is competed over a standard distance, Olympic distance, but for the first time ever, it's going to be over a sprint distance, which makes things pretty exciting. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's going to make it a much faster, more fewer space, and probably a bit more open as well, because there's so much can happen. There's less likely to be, you know, a big breakaway, and there's less chance for someone who's not made the front pack to be able to catch up on the run as well. Yeah, I mean, on the men's side, obviously, we have the Brownlee brothers, probably... Hot favourites going in, big target on their backs. Um, Alistair, we're not so sure on really with his current fitness. He pulled out of the Abu Dhabi WTS race due to injury, but he says he's on the comeback for this race. So that'd be really interesting. Number one seeded is Johnny Brownlee. Mm -hmm. And again, not sure where he's at yeah. fitness wise, but. We don't see them race together that often anymore with Alistair, you know, doing 70.3s. And Pretty much every time they do, it ends rather well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, so. um, and then obviously we've got the South African duo. We've got Richard mm. Murray and Henry Schumann. Um, Henry Schumann will likely be out the front on the swim. If Richard Murray makes it into that front pack on the bike, I think everyone's going to be a little yeah, bit worried. we've seen how well he's running already yeah. this season. And then obviously we've got the Australian trio. We've got Matt Hauser, Luke William and Jacob Burtwistle. All three of them are super exciting athletes. Um, yeah. I'm very, very, you know, excited to watch them race and see how they play out. As particularly Jacob Burtwood, so I think he'd be a real threat to the Brownleys and everyone else out there. Well, I think you know they've got a bit of pressure on their shoulders as well because it's you know, the home crowd and it's the first event. Well, the women's is the first event, but it's the first day of the Commonwealth Games in Australia on the Gold Coast, where a lot of them train and you know been brought up quite a lot of the triathletes. It's a mecca for triathlon. And then you're know, going onto the women's side. I think the the biggest sort of poster girl for the Commonwealth Games for triathlon is Ashley Gentle. And she's the only athlete last year who managed to beat Flora Duffy, who's, you know, been unstoppable. So she could be the best hope for Australia, maybe. Yeah, but could Flora spoil the party? Well, interestingly, even though, you know, Flora is double world champion, she has yet to win a title or even get on the podium at a major Games. And she, you know, last year very much stated that, you know, this is what she was getting, you know, this year was all about to start with. And a lot of athletes really have focused on the Commonwealth Games. It's a major event for them. But um, you know, Ashley Gentle hasn't just got Flora to worry about. There's Andrea Hewitt, who won on a very similar course last year in the, the World Triathlon Series at the, in the same venue. So you know, she's going to be, she won a medal at the Commonwealth Games, I think, back in 2006. Mm. So she's going to be trying to get back on the podium again. And then there's Great Britain. I know it's England and Wales, but it actually means there's a bigger contingent. Well, in particular, Team England has yeah. a very strong swim contingent. Yeah. We've got Vicky Holland, Jess Learmonth, and Sophie Coldwell. I mean, them as a trio together, perhaps with Flora Duffy getting away on the bike, 
Yeah, it could be hard to catch. And then also, you know, I'm not sure what form she's in, but non Stanford, former world champion, she's representing Wales. Mm. So, you know, another athlete, you wouldn't normally see so many athletes from Great Britain in one race, but because it's kind of spread across. So it's pretty open. I'm going to put you on the spot here, Heather. Um, top male, top female. Oh, I've got to do both. Okay, gosh. Um, I'm going to go for Richard Murray for the men's. It's not who I want to win. This is what I'm thinking. <laughs> um, but then I guess on the women's, it, um, yeah, it's Flora Duffy. It's anyway, yeah, just Flora Duffy. It's all I need to say. <laughs> And of course, we've got the para triathlon event two days later with the PTWC category. So it's a recumbent hand cycle on the bike and then a wheelchair on the run. Yeah, now if Australia haven't already managed to get on the podium from the individual men's and women's events, this could be their chance because they've got strong contingent, especially in the women's side. They've got the favourite Emily Tapp and she's joined by Lauren Parker, who only 12 months ago was paralysed whilst training for triathlon and she's now back on the start line in front of her home crowd. So that's pretty exciting for her. Yeah, it's an amazing story. And then on the men's side, we've got Australian Bill Chafee is a real favourite going in alongside Team England's Joe Townsend. And then on the same day as the para triathlon event, we have the mixed team relay. This is a relatively new event to the Commonwealth Games. It was introduced in 2014 to the Glasgow Commonwealth Games. It consists of two men and two women to a team. They race over a lot shorter distances. They basically do a mini triathlon each and then tag and pass over to each teammate. Well, the last Commie Games, it was England first, then South Africa and Australia were in third. Now, they're going to be hoping to swap that around, obviously, in front of the home crowd. But, I mean, trying to find four top athletes for your team, it's, it's quite a stretch. I mean, one country who have opened up a little bit wider, I guess, is Bermuda. And Flora is obviously such a strong athlete on her own. But to find three other athletes to join her, to give them a chance of a medal. I think that's kind of the exciting thing about the mixed team relay. I mean, you can have a fantastic athlete in a team, but that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to be the winners. You could yeah. have some lesser known good athletes. Con you know, consistent. Yeah, collectively, they're yeah. a really strong force, so. Well, interestingly, I mean, Bermuda have brought in Tyler Butterfield, who we haven't seen race ITU for years, and he's, you know, very much made his mark on long distance and middle distance triathlon. So he's it's, gone back so to going, his roots. So yeah, going to a relay that's even shorter than <laughs> the sprint distance. I mean, it's gonna be interesting to see how he fares in that, along with some younger teammates that they've got. I mean, England are gonna be looking strong, no mm. doubt, after, you know, they've got the title to defend. I think they might be hard to beat. What, Where's your where's your feeling, Mark? I want you to give I, me a one, two, three as you've put me I on the would, spot. I would love to say Team England, and I think it's going to be super close. But I am slightly worried about Australia. It's really? a strong team. That is a strong team. And they're fast, those boys and girls. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm worried it might be Australia, Team England, South, South Africa. Africa. Okay, yeah. well, we want to know who you think is going to win the mixed relay. And you've got the choices in this week's weekly poll. Yeah, it is Team England, Australia, South Africa, Bermuda, or other. So you can select that and let us know in the comments below. You can enter that by clicking just up here. It's time for the GTN Tribe, and this week we're heading over to Vancouver in Canada for the UBC Thunderbirds Triathlon Sports Club. Yeah, it's their first year as a competitive triathlon club. They say bridging the gap between varsity and recreational sports. Yeah, they've got a number of, well, top-level competitors as well as beginners, I'm sure. Uh, they've got a chap who's been to the World Ironman Championships after qualifying over in Whistler, apparently with a stunning race, and they've travelled out to Hawaii and stomped a fantastic time. Nice. Well, they have plenty of events like on their doorstep as well, because they do have the Vancouver 70.3 that Ironman hold there, I think in just a couple of months' time as well. They've even set up their own event, it is the Northwest Collegiate Triathlon Championship in Vancouver, um, which sounds like it's very hotly contested. They took the male and female team trophy prizes last year. Cool. Well, let's have a quick look at some of their training. And it looks like they don't stick to purely triathlon. But first, we've got some uh, a nice size tour with a good turbo setup going on there for some team training. And then it looks like a photo post track session maybe on the infield, but it looks very nicely floodlit. And then some adventure racing. Yeah, quite a few pictures from adventure racing. Uh, it looks like it's a big, you know, multi, they're looking beyond just triathlon and doing a bit of everything. Um, run Vancouver. That's great. Well, please keep sending in your triathlon clubs using the hashtag GTN Tribe. Send it in over Facebook or get in touch over Twitter or Instagram. Right, time for hot 
or not. And to start us off, we have a food sensor that goes on your teeth and measures, or potentially is going to measure the calories and what you're consuming. What do you think to this? Well, I mean, it's to start with, I thought that's really cool because you know, for science and things like that, and if it can measure the vitamins and the minerals and you know, to say if you're having to have blood tests, you could know exactly what you're getting from your food, that could be pretty cool. Yeah, but I think... We've survived pretty well on this planet long enough without needing to know what we're putting in our mouth or not. This seems a bit silly to me. If I'm be Go honest. on then. Not. The next one is the inaugural race of the Kiwi Man, and it's one that actually kind of slipped past our radar. But it sounds epic. Yeah, I mean, it's a full distance event and just looking at the run profile, it kind of goes like this and they finish on top of a mountain. Yeah, so it follows the same sort of format as like the Norse Man, so yeah. Pretty brutal. I think we're in agreement on this one. Hot. Hot. Next up, Plastic Free Triathlon. So there's an event in Croyd in southwest of England that's pledging to be plastic free for as much of the event as it can. Yep. Yeah. Um, and actually, when you think about it, a lot of events, especially the big events, there's a lot of plastic that's used mm. in them. You've got gels, you've got the water bottles, you've got the plastic bags. It really adds up. So this event is trying to basically make it completely plastic free. The gel packets, well, they get rid of them. They're flat, yeah. flapjacks, they're protein, protein balls. balls. I mean, I'm going to sign up just for the food. The fact that, you know, it's good for the environment and they're giving you great food. Hot. Next up, a new venue for the Super League. They have just announced that they're going to host one of their races in Singapore early next year. Yeah, and considering the company is actually based in Singapore, I'm surprised we didn't see this sooner. Um, I wonder whether actually, you know, Singapore being a bit of a trek for some of the athletes mm. that are trying to juggle this with the WTS series, whether that's going to be an issue, but still, an awesome venue. Hot or not, Heather? Hot. And finally, ITU and gender equality. Now, it looks like the ITU have been leading the way. Marisol Casada has been chairing a group looking at gender equality, trying to help other international federations learn from what the ITU are doing. Yeah, I don't think you can argue with this. This is great news, so it's got to be a hot. Now, for the first bit of news, it's the Innovate Descent Race. And I've got to be honest, when this popped into my inbox, I thought I was maybe falling for an April Fool's joke. Uh, but turns out this thing is real and it sounds absolutely absurd. It's a running race down one of the steepest skiing slopes in the world. It's in Kitzbühel, Austria, and they quote, it takes in blind drops, daredevil jumps, gradients of up to 80%. It sounds nuts. I know, you can't even imagine it, but apparently 180 competitors are mad enough. Well, the entries are open for 180 competitors if there are that many people who are mad enough to do it. I mean, it's a bit like a time trial and, a, and an effect so that it gets sent off every 30 seconds. And that's to then qualify to get the chance to do it again because the top 30, male and female, then get ranked and then they have the final and they're set off once every minute with the fastest runner going last. And the champion gets crowned downhill king. We recently saw the Olympic triathlon champion Gwen Jorgensen make her debut appearance on the track, having retired from triathlon and given birth. And she's announced that she's aiming for the marathon in Tokyo 2020. And she started off with a 5k indoor race and she clocked a PB of 15.15. And she's now starting to up the distance, getting closer to that marathon. Yeah, this last weekend she did the Stanford Invitational 10k race. It's her first 10k on the track since focusing on marathon running. She went a 31.55. Not bad, and apparently she thinks she could go faster, and she wasn't wearing spikes, she was just wearing her Nike vapor flies. Right, it's time for some science. So there's been a pilot study looking at the effects of omega-3 on athletes' health and performance, and they specifically used fish oil from krill. Now, they took 50 athletes who were competing in the Norseman, which is a long-distance extreme triathlon, and they measured their omega-3 before and after the race. Now, interestingly, they found that the athletes, or most of the athletes, omega-3 was still lower than normal up to five weeks after the race. But on the plus side, having high doses of krill oil actually brought their levels back up to normal pretty quickly. Yeah, so they've basically concluded that high-intensity exercise and exertion reduces our omega-3 levels. But by having higher omega-3 levels, it increases our recovery time, it reduces our chances of illness and means that we perform better. Um, admittedly, this is just a pilot study, but still really interesting. Right, spring might be trying its best to arrive in the Northern Hemisphere, but still, we just can't shake off that indoor training vibe. Well, if you are a fan of Swift or indoor training, then there's some good news for you, as there's an exciting new segment that's just arrived. Yeah, but it's called Out to Zwift, and it's got some similarities to a pretty famous climb out in the Alps, 
Alp d'Huez. Though it has more switchbacks, it's got 21 switchbacks in total. It's 12 kilometers long, has a total elevation of 1,036 meters and an average gradient of 8.5%. The only catch and drawback is that you have to be level 12 or higher on Zwift. Oh, what a shame. That rules me out. <laughs> but never mind. Anyway, leading on from indoor training, last week we asked you, do you reduce your hours if you're training indoors compared to outdoors? Yeah, and it was pretty close in second place. No, but with 40% in first place, yes, with 60% and some interesting comments below. Yeah, I'm definitely with the yes on that one. <laughs> Now for the caption competition. Last week we had a great photo from the IT racer in New Plymouth. Bit of a champagne celebration. It was, and we've chosen a runner-up and a winner this week. So the runner-up prize goes to Juan Pablo Garcia and his caption, which I love, attacking with a champagnolo shifter. <laughs> it's very imaginative. It's quite clever. It's very good. Uh, but our winner this week is Jacob Brown, and he said... My shower doesn't work in the hotel, <laughs> which is great. So, Jacob, if you get in touch on Facebook, you can claim your GTN swimming cap. But this week's caption competition is of us two in Mallorca entering the water. Yeah, we do look pretty weightless, don't we, there? Yeah, very well-timed photo. Um, but, yeah, let us know your captions in the comments section below. And for the GTN Pain Cave, and first one this week is from Dustin Besset and Nave Santin saying, it's March, it's snowy, we've got ice storms here in New York City, so he's got his Zwift setup going. Um, and this looks like it's a Jamis bike, which we don't see too many of, set up on his turbo train, and then his giant, I think that's a TCR alongside. When the weather does get good enough, looks like it's ready <laughs> for the road. Only got one set of pedals, but it's having to swap those over. Bit of a hassle. He's certainly going to be keeping cool because that fan is pretty it's close it's to like the bike. like an industrial fan as well. <laughs> yeah. He's got a dual screen setup for his Zwift, um, spare, spare set of wheels. Well, I have noticed he's got his race wheels on an on wheel turbo train. Ooh. Yeah. I hope, you, I hope that's just for the photo. And I like Dustin. the angle of the photo. I want to know if you've either got a drone in your house or like an extra long selfie stick or maybe there's some stairs up there. Who knows? All right. The next one is, well, to be honest, we have to apologise. We can't seem to find the name for this one, but it's a really cool photo. So do get in touch if it is yours. Um, we've got a felt on the bike stand and then a BH bike closer to us. Um, and this looks like someone actually does a little bit of draft legal racing because they've got, I think oh, that's, yeah. I think their short clip on um, bars on their road bike um, and really cool setup on the felt. I've got to say, you've got a nice disc wheel, their Ma Mavic front wheel. Oh, that's a deep front wheel, isn't it? And I mean, this like the, the maintenance area behind is... But there's a, looks like a cream carpet. Maybe it's a tiled floor, but from here it looks like a carpet, which is kind of... It looks, like my, it looks like my dream, to be honest. <laughs> um, next one, and this is a little bit different. This is from Inaki Persaz, uh, sent in over Facebook. It's not necessarily an indoor pain cave. But <laughs> or a pain cave, really. I no. Mean, it just looks pretty like they're Delightful. chilling out. Maybe after their pain cave session, they went and dived in. <laughs> yeah, well, cracking uh, fly kick yeah. on your back. Uh, well, next one from Salt Zorgel. Um, and this one is a few images we've got going on here. Um, we have a, a giant, well, a live bike set up on a turbo. And then is that another? That's a giant TCR, I think, um, set up on another turbo. There's a lot of rosettes hanging up there now. I've never seen a rosette in triathlon, only in equestrian events. I wonder if they ride horses as well. Uh, good eye there. Um, Interesting. This is a really nice setup, though. And um, the treadmill alongside with their tax turbo trainer. Um, yeah, fantastic. Well, do please keep sending in your pain caves using the hashtag GTN Pain Cave. Well, that's it for this week's GTN show. Do keep your comments coming in. Send in any photos of yourself training your pain caves. And if you're a member of a club, do send us in some info on that as well. Yeah, and make sure you tune in for the Commonwealth Games. I think there's going to be some exciting racing going on. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about the Commonwealth Games, you can see my video on everything you need to know about the Commonwealth Games by clicking here. And if you want more videos from GTN, remember you can subscribe by just clicking on the globe. And if you're starting out this year and you're new to triathlon and you're training for your first triathlon, well, there's a great video for that here.